All right, we are live on bourbonblog.com having some cigars, some spirits. We're going to be the first uh, live tasting and interview that Sean Williams of Cohiba Cigars has done about the new Cohiba Siri M. And I'm just trying it for the yeah. first time, pairing it with some lovely plantation uh, rum. To, have, have you lit up yet? I have, yes, I have. I'm, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. twist off my little pigtail here. All right, show, show us this. This is a really, uh, you know, as, as you show us the pigtail, the footing. Uh, tell us about the Siri M. And again, for all those watching, uh, make sure you like this channel, subscribe to it, share the video as you're beginning to watch. Uh, what do we have, Sean? What are we trying? So the Cohiba Siri M. Um, it is the uh, uh, the first. Cohiba ever to be made in the USA, uh, made at uh, the El Titan de Bronze factory in uh, the Little Havana section of Miami, thus the name Siri M, as in Miami. Gotcha. Um, very, very uh, uh, small family owned factory, uh, 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 super artisan, uh, if that word can be overused, uh, but, but truly is, um, from any given time, there's only nine to 12 rollers there. Um, and they are rollers from start to finish. So. Um, the vast majority of cigars that we smoke that are available in, in retail shelves um, are rolled uh, in pairs where you have one person doing the bunching of the cigar, then another sort of finishing uh, the wrapper on the cigar. Well, uh, in, in, in Titan of Bronze, uh, and it, as, it, as, it, as is in classic Cuban uh, style rolling, uh, they're from start to finish. Uh, the bunching to the wrapper uh, and, and, and you know, all the components in between, so to speak. Um, so level nine certified rollers, uh, incredible, incredible um, operation down there, but very, very small, family uh, family owned, uh, very hands-on operation. Uh, a factory I have some experience with, having made cigars with them uh, uh, years ago for a number of years. So it's kind of cool to sort of come full circle and, uh, and, and, and bring a cigar to, um, you know, this production to the U.S. was just really, really cool. Uh, now, as far as the nuts and bolts of the cigar, what you have here is a beautiful, uh, it's hard for me to find this camera, beautiful uh, Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper. Yes. Uh, binder is uh, Nicaragua Esteli. And in the filler, uh, there is more Esteli Nicaragua tobacco along with a little Jalapa and a little Coloto Cabano as is uh, uh, you know, uh, present in all of the Colibas that we make as far as the red dots. So um, for me, it's going to be a, a hair above medium. The Nicaraguan tobacco really comes through with some of the deep complexities that you like, uh, but it's not super spice heavy. You get sort of a nice sort of uh, um, nutty complexity and sort of a cool spice, uh, but it's, it's more of a creamy, it's a bold creamy cigar. Um, yeah. Very, very um, tasty and enjoyable experience. Finished with a uh, nice uh, 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 classic Cuban pigtail and a closed foot. That's that closed foot. Closed foot, so yeah. Um, and it gives you a few, few different things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make use of my pigtail. So with this with this uh, classic pigtail, you uh, if you don't have a cutter, you can simply just twist it off. Nice. And instead of punching a cigar, you have a little hole there. Uh, now I'll, I'll sort of pinch mine, open up a little bit more because I like to get a little bit more airflow and actually taste the uh, the tobacco on my tongue. Now with the closed foot, this does a couple of different things. Uh, just from a, 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 an enjoyment standpoint, what this allows you to do is really on that initial light, you're going to really, really uh, uh, taste a lot of the characteristics of, a, of the wrapper because that's the first thing that you're lighting. As opposed to typically when you light a cigar, uh, most of what you get initially is going to be uh, the toasting of the foot. Okay. Well, this you really get sort of a nice uh, uh, pop of, of, of what the wrapper has uh, in store throughout the experience. So, so it kind of changes the experience a little bit. But also from a functional standpoint, it was just sort of a way to keep tobacco from getting in uh, gentlemen's pockets who carried back in the old days when they carried cigars in their pockets, it, it kept the closed foot kept tobacco from getting in the bottom of their pockets. So, oh, nice. So that way the tobacco wouldn't fall out, even like you know, we still keep yeah. you know, you and I do in our pockets, but this really was the way they used to. Well, we have it. cellophane now, most cigars cellophane, in cellophane, right? That this was the cellophane of back in the day, yeah. I like so the it. closed foot sort of was a way to sort of seal off the tobacco in the cigar. But now we just enjoy it for what it is as far as just the, uh, the experience. So I'm going to get caught up here, man. Yeah, you go ahead and get caught up. And again, I'll, I'll let everyone know. I see a lot of wonderful cigar fans uh, watching. Uh, 
Sanj Patel of Sanjas is, is giving you a shout out there. Yeah, um, my man. I love him. I miss him, man. Yeah. Great incredible, guy. Incredible He's retail, there. incredible shop, man. Yes. Incredible place there in New Jersey. He's watching yeah. us. Uh, uh, Cigar Brat says he's excited to try it. Richard, uh, Richard yeah. over in uh, Wayne County, as I like to mess with him in Detroit. Wayne County. <laughs> we do have a question from Brian. Uh, though you have the, the, the pigtail, can you do a V cut on this as well? Do you recommend doing it just the way you I, did it? Just I, the way I, you recommend I, it? I can't recommend against that enough. Absolutely not. Right. Um, for, for a couple of reasons. I mean, at most, I'll do a guillotine flat cut. Um, but a, a, a it's sort of there's an extra care uh, that goes into making a cigar with the fan tail. So um, I guess for, for putting it lightly, it's sort of um, it's not respectful to 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 really. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just not. Uh, I, I'm, it's, sure. sort of, like, you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that uh, for that reason. But just from a functional standpoint, um, this cigar isn't finished with your classic triple cap because it is. A fan tail has that. So, um, it may not hold together yeah. if, you, if you you know do that sort of slice through the top of the uh, cigar with it. So uh, for a number of reasons, I wouldn't uh, recommend. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, you know, and, and not the least of which is that um, uh, extra care goes into making a pigtail cigar. So I think that should be uh, that should be enjoyed. So right on. So that no, that's uh, that definitely helps. And again. Um, all types of attention, just like with all Cohibas, but especially as you set out to create uh, this cigar, celebrating Miami. What was what was the intent? I mean, obviously, I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting some of those creamy notes uh, you mentioned. And which, uh, just before you answer that question, did you pour? Which, ask. which rum did you want to pour first? Did you have one? Did you want to? I, I already poured the XO. I, I didn't. Know yeah, I XO. That's the one I was going to recommend. Okay. We'll pour that yeah, XO. We'll yeah, talk yeah. about that in a moment. But yeah, tell us, and I, we're pairing the plantation it's so amazing with the cigar yeah. by the way yeah. uh what what inspired the journey of the uh siri m well one of the, the the things that really um one of the things that we enjoy as cigar makers but 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 is also the most difficult is um is innovation you know coming up with new blends new projects things that nature without you know um getting repetitive or, or trying to sell somebody a bill of goods telling them that something's new and it's really not new um, unfortunately we have a little bit in, that, in, in our in, in our industry um one thing that we do um, um you know even before me uh with, with cohiba is not release a ton of stuff you know um, right. what, what i like to think that what we do is well thought out uh, it makes sense in the range of the products that we have um so we kind of take our time with it uh, and with this, it was just sort of, um, it's kind of the right time to do it. Um, you know, we, we had some really, really uh, great releases, uh, two editions of Spectre, um, the uh, Royale last year, uh, oh, yeah. the Connecticut. Um, so looking at the portfolio, you know, we have in incredible uh, tobacco represented from Honduras in, in the Weather Quaver Blue. Uh, as far as here in the U.S., Connecticut Broadleaf represented well in, in, in believe it black um ecuadorian tobacco represented well with the uh um, uh believe it connecticut uh and it just kind of you know of course cameroon uh, uh represented well with the red dot so I look as far as you know where we have representation of really good tobacco from different parts of the world and it's kind of hard to find a blind spot so so what do we do differently um to really you know have some fun with something and and really get our teeth into something different and it's not much more than, 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 than we could have thought of than, than bringing uh, Cohiba production here stateside and, and doing something here in the U.S., making it in Miami, um, you know, a, a, a juggernaut of a brand like Cohiba, um, you know, going to such a, you know, a small uh, uh, family operation uh, uh, here in the U.S. Uh, was just um, it's just something fun to do and, and also something uh, exciting to do um, and something yeah. unexpected. And it's never never a bad thing if you can you know kind of keep people uh you know on their toes a little bit and, and not not uh, doing things that that are not expected so uh so it was just it, it, you know you want to have fun man i mean i really want to have fun doing this and, and, and one of the things that i love the most is is the innovation piece i mean i'm always smoking something that we're working on uh, a lot of it never sees the light of day as far as hitting the market but 
um, you know, me as a cigar maker and not just me, all the guys involved with, with the brand and the company, um, we're always looking for new stuff to smoke. So, uh, so we always look for opportunities to sort of try new things and do new things. And, um, and this was just one opportunity to do that in, in a special way. So it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well done. Well, and you've done a great job with it. And again, we're trying the new Cohiba Siri M with our friend Sean Williams of Cohiba Cigars. Any questions? Already some great questions coming in, but any questions, uh, ask them down below. We're pairing it with some rum, which I'll tell you about here in just a moment. Um, and I should also say, as, as you're thinking about uh, those of you watching, getting one of these, these are, is this something limited? Will this be a yearly offer? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Super limited. Um, very small operation, as I said. Uh, we only made 50,000 cigars. So what we have is uh, 5,000 boxes of 10. Wow. So um, that's all we're doing. We're going to do another release next year, but it won't be this exact same cigar. Um, I'm inclined to stay with this blend because I, I, I'm really excited to, to finally be working with a Corojo wrapper with Cohiba. Right. So I'm inclined to stay with this blend, but it certainly won't be the same size. Uh, and it'll be as limited in production as this was. So this, this exact cigar that we're smoking now will never be available again. So if you can get it, get it. So if you can get this one, get it and then compare it next year. Will it be called Siri M next year? Miami? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, not changing that. Yeah. Not changing mm -hmm. Miami. Well, you know, when I was thinking of Miami and I was just thinking, you know, other, uh, you know, things that are enjoyed in Miami and, and really all over, but especially Miami, uh, I was thinking about great rums, you know, having a great cigar mm -hmm. in Florida, having some rum and uh, really my favorite rum uh, is by Plantation Rum. Uh, all the rums they do are incredible, Sean. This is the uh, Barbados Rum Plantation XO. It's uh, believed to be a blend of like eight to fifteen-year-old rums plus. Uh, it celebrated their twentieth anniversary, and this was uh, distilled and aged in a used bourbon barrel okay. in um, Barbados. And then they took this on a boat, and it went all the way. The Cognac France, because our, our friends at Plantation Rum are owned by uh, Pierre from Cognac. And then they let it sit in not use, but new Cognac cask to really settle that okay. um, flavor down to bring some elegance to it. Uh, I have a term that I use whenever I'm uh, educating on Plantation Rum all over. We love to include them on our spirits tours that I educate on. I say they like to Frenchify their rum. They Frenchify their rum. It has some elegance, and it ends up just tasting uh, so beautiful. That XO, I mean, creme brulee. You already said creamy on that Cohiba uh, M. I get that creme brulee note against this really soft, great sugars. Do you get that creme brulee? Yeah, I uh, I, I, I don't know honestly if, if, if that's what I picked up, but I certainly uh, got. Um... Yeah, what do you get? I'm I'm, I'm curious. You know, to me, it was more of a, if, if we're going to dessert, I, I do, and maybe it's the, it's, it's the sort of cigar sort of inferring uh, my, my taste buds, but I got more of a of a, of a, of a, of a hint of toffee. Um, oh, yeah. That makes sense. That's um, nice toffee. So to be fair, I don't eat creme brulee, so I don't have a good frame of reference. <laughs> I've awesome. had it a couple of times in my life, but I can't, like, tell you what creme brulee tastes like. Yeah, no, I I get that. I get that toffee. Uh, it's it's really beautiful. Any um, what have you all been when you've been tasting this already a little bit? It's been out for this has only been out for what a month or so, not very long, right? This wow, cigar. is that is that new? Wow. How, how no? I mean, I'm saying the cigar. How long has the cigar oh. been out? Yeah, the cigar. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> the run like wow, great, thanks. Um, yeah, the cigar. I guess I guess maybe a month. Yeah, but it's it's, man, it's been gangbusters. Um, yeah. So uh, the response has been has been incredible, um, but as far as uh, um, what I've been tasting with the cigar, you know, uh, I'm, I, yep. I drink a lot of different bourbons. Haven't right. been doing anything super hot. Um, I'm trying to think the the most recent Eagle Rare, I think is the most recent bourbon oh, yeah. that I had with this. Um, yeah, I, I I saw some photos of you there at Buffalo Trace visiting our friends at Buffalo Trace. You, you broke up a little bit, but yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I was saying 
I saw you having some uh, eagle rare there with our friends at Buffalo Trace a week or two. Well, I, I, actually, 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 that was uh, that was a Weller special reserve with Mister. Was it Weller you had? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Did yeah, you have yeah, a nice, yeah. nice tour at at, at uh, Buffalo Trace? Oh my God! Incredible, incredible. And I'm sure you've been there, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I hadn't been, uh, and and I really didn't, I guess, fully understand or appreciate. The history, the distillery there. It's just incredible. Like absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's a beautiful here in Frankfort, uh, Kentucky. Uh tell us down below what you're smoking on or tweet back to us. Tell us what you're sipping. Uh you spent a little time with uh Harlan Wheat Harlan Wheatley, Master Stiller. Yeah. Uh yeah. were you were you guys talking bourbon, cigars? Were you were you brainstorming? Just uh enjoying well, the whole um, we, 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 we were talking bourbon and cigars and we were brainstorming and, 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 and some low key collaboration, um, yeah. which I'm really excited about. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, I, I don't know if I'm, this is probably going to come out at some point, but we're, we're, we're actually working on a very, very special project for, for Weller that, uh, wow. that I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to so, be a, a cigar slash bourbon project. It's going, it's a very special project that Cohiba is working on for weather. And uh, and I don't know if I should have even said that much, but uh, I'm on the bourbon. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so yeah, so we're, uh, we're, 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 we're excited about it. We're excited. That's great. It's be a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and we look forward to hearing more. Uh, we appreciate you giving us a little sneak peek and uh, yeah. uh, that'll yeah. be very exciting to, to see what, uh, what you all do, and it just looked like you're having a great time back out on the road. Doing a, you're doing a yeah, lot you know, of different. Talked a lot uh, myself and, and Harlan, and um, you know the the similarities. Um, you know, obviously, you know, bourbon is bourbon, cigars are cigars, tobacco, and you know, so um, the disciplines obviously don't don't line up. Um, you know, totally congruent. But there are some things. I mean, the big thing that I took away is is for for, for each discipline, uh, the respect and the appreciation for time. But that's even magnified more so in, in bourbon. And talking with um, with Harlan, I think he's been been there for 25, 26 years, something like that. You know, certainly right. Right. You know, almost three decades. And uh, he talks about how hot you know bourbon is right now, and in particular their distillery. And he says, you know, he says, you know. We always knew what happened, but we didn't think it would happen so fast. And I kind of right. like, that's like, Carlin, you've been here 26 years. What do you mean fast? He's like, well, you know, I never thought about it that way. But <laughs> it's just sort of how he thinks about time. Like, you know, I mean, you they're working on stuff 10, 12 years, 50, whatever, you know. So, so um, you know, he's working on stuff that he may or may not actually get to drink at his maturation, you know. So, um, so the way... Uh, they sort of compartmentalize time is just totally different. It's like, you know, overnight success in, in 26 years is just, just amazing. But again, just kind of looks at time different. And uh, and that's the two things, man, with, with, with bourbon, with cigars, or with any thing that, 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 that can't replace uh, uh, the need to have uh, time and material, right? The right material and the right time. There's no there's no substitution for that. And that was sort of the big takeaway in our conversation, which is which is really cool. He's, he's, he's a super nice guy. Uh, yeah, so, a lot of fun. Here. Yeah. Great people there at Buffalo Trace. And of course, it, 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 the time flies. I mean, we started Bourbon Blog mm -hmm. uh, dot com about 15 years ago, and it does feel wow. like somehow it wow. grew quickly. But it took wow. it took some time to grow it. And I know that uh, it's just like tobacco. It takes some time to to age those tobaccos to get them where you want. How long are these tobaccos aged for in this cigar? Different, um, different. Uh, variations. Uh, we have um, some Jalapa going back to 06, um, which that's the oldest tobacco. Uh, the youngest tobacco here goes back to uh, 2016. So, uh, so five years to 15 years. Wow, excellent! And I can see it as I'm as I'm tasting it. It's uh, it's opening up. It's that that creamy those creamy notes are coming through. What what other notes are we getting? I mean, how else? Obviously, this so is a this is, it's it's a cigar for Cohiba. Creamy, um, that smooth sort of, uh, 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 um, you know, 
coffee undercurrent, not 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 really sharp, but just that nice sort of undercurrent of coffee bean, but creamy, nutty complexity. Um, yeah. uh, but that that's just, just the, the, the thing I really love about the cigar is that I get um, you know the, the little nuances that I like out of the Nicaraguan tobacco, but but it just it, it, it presents itself just in this creamy, nutty complexity that I really really like. Oh, it's so it's it's it, it's complex, but yet it's approachable. I mean, it has so much. It has so much going on, and just like all the other Cohiba cigars, they all offer something new. They they all really have something new they offer. That's the trick, man. <laughs> it's not um it's not easy. Um, yeah. you know, I don't pretend that we have um the the, the market cornered on all the the, the, the the unicorns back out there. Luckily, um, unfortunately, we have uh you know um, we have access to, 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 to things to a degree that a lot of other brands don't. Um, but I mean, you know, certainly, um, you know, a ton of brands are using Nicaraguan tobacco, using Corojo. This is the first time that we've used Corojo, so um, we're kind of late to the dance with that. So um, it was really important that we bring something out that doesn't uh, step on any other profiles that we have. That's really that's critically important. I don't want anybody to ever grab a Cohiba Red down and say, "Wow, okay, this tastes like this." Whether it's another cigar or certainly not being uh, a cigar that's in our our, our current lineup. All of my cigars are distinctly different. There's no bleed over. Um, and and I try my best to make sure I say that don't taste like anything else that you're going to have. So, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was uh, just about, was it just about a year ago, the Royale, or a little less than a year ago, the Royale was released? Uh, this is the, the newest one. That Royale? Is, uh, Royale was Royale. about a year ago it came out? Yeah. I mean, we, it, it launched in March. Like, like uh, and it was already slated to launch, and we right. kind of thought about maybe we should sort of pump the brakes. It's, uh, Pandemic was, was coming in play and travel was being shut down. But uh, yeah, we launched it uh, in, in, in at least in March. It started shipping with official launches in April and uh, and it did gangbusters last year. So really, really happy that we brought it out. Um, still uh, 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 a terrific cigar. Um, and that was the first of its kind uh, uh, having been made at uh, our factory in Donnelly, Honduras. We've never made a Cohiba now. So um, and I think it's important. I, mean, I have this conversation all the time. Well, even the exact same blend. Uh, and process it and roll it in different factories, and it's going to taste different. So, so it's important uh, uh, to me that uh, as we work on these different projects, whether it's within uh, our own ecosystem, so to speak, as far as the factories that we have, or uh, other partners, uh, which we won't do a lot of that. I mean, because we, you know, Cohiba's uh, a very, um, um, I don't know what's the word, uh, guarded brand as it relates to you know uh, the, the general cigar portfolio. So we want to keep as, as much of it in house. But we want to get out of the, the the routine of just constantly making it in the same factory with the same uh, um, you know uh, processing methods. What it's about. Yes, yes, and and again, uh, kind of cut up there. I just want to make sure you said that one. Yeah, thing. yeah. I'm, no, I, no, I, no problem, no problem. For whatever reason, I have a weak signal. This is this no, is, it's okay. This hey, this happens. We're we're having some great whisk or some great rum. Those people are having some great whiskey and rum, probably too. But we're having some great stuff, so no worries. We're really enjoying this. Uh, you're really looking at different, um, using different factories like you you did on this one. You may do that even again in the future. Yeah, um, there's always a possibility. Um, again. Um, we're pretty guarded against that. Um, this is a situation that made sense because uh, um, the size of the factory, the familiarity with the factory, uh, uh, with me having uh, worked with them previously, and also they they have um, you know uh, their own experience with, with working. Uh, with Tell you what I may do, Sean, if you can hear me. I may bring Sean back on. Uh, I'm going to try just to bring you back on briefly. Sometimes it helps when I take you away, then bring you back on. But uh, we're trying this wonderful Cohiba uh, cigar. Okay, can you hear us now? Yeah, man. It's the weird thing. Um, this, this has been my studio for <laughs> no, we're fine. For Don't worry, year, man. It's like, Look at the studio. Uh, the studio is amazing you have behind you. This is like, it looks like an oasis. It's like a cigar oasis you have there in Atlanta, right? <laughs> this is, this is a, a, I guess we affectionately refer to as a grotto. This is sort of an outside area. Uh, 
And so uh, so uh, it's just, it's just I don't, it, it ended up this way. Um, when, I, when I started the very first live, um, year, you know, a year or so ago, um, it just just kind of stuck. I got comfortable. Um, this 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 couch that I'm sitting on now, man, it's it's about it's about. I'm I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm 20 pounds less than when I started doing this, but uh, you you can, you, you can feel the give in the uh, <laughs> the cushion, man. I like it. He has he has the seersucker. He has the backdrop there in Atlanta. It's uh, and you do these lives on Friday too. You still doing your live shows on Friday? Yeah, it's gotten trickier because I'm traveling now, right? So the right. last two weekends I haven't done it, but uh, I'm going to be back on this Friday. Jeez, the long term landscape. This is killing me, Tom. The long term. No, no, it's, it's all yeah. right. So this Friday, uh, you'll be on. How do people find you on your Friday show? Uh, just on Instagram is the best way. But it's a, uh, um, um, it's a, uh, it's through Cigar World. Um, it's the Nightcap with Cohiba. Um, and I usually I'll post about it on Friday. Sometimes on Thursday and Friday I'll post, and then I'll do something in my story. So there's always a link attached on Facebook. And just pop in. It's on Zoom. Um, really informal. I mean, I'm just kind of I'm there. Um, it's going to be a, a, a you know always a music theme that kind of connects some dots in music. Uh, uh, you know, we're smoking cohibas, and it's kind of it, it's, it's 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 grown to us. And people are so jump on, and uh, sometimes more, sometimes they they're, they're less, but they all jump on, and most have cohibas, and they they sort of exchange information as to where to get the new cigars, and kind of. You know, talk about um, you know uh, what they like uh, with the, the, the different blends that they're smoking. So it's turned into its own little uh, sort of club, man. So um, I'm looking forward to getting back on this Friday. I haven't been on it in a couple of weeks because last week I was in Philly, uh, uh, Delaware. At least week before that I was in Detroit or Alabama. I'm not even sure, but um, looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can find uh, Sean Williams there at Sean Williams underscore Cohiba, following all the. Uh, incredible adventures he has and also his uh his live show and again we're trying the siri m with the uh plantation xl yes. why don't we try a little bit of the um of the pineapple let's try some of this pineapple uh rum this one we were actually at the launch for this rum at tales of the cocktail in new orleans i think about six or seven somewhere around there six or seven years ago and it, this is one of like just the tastiest things just to have it's like a cocktail in a bottle they're using real uh real pineapple the essence of the pineapple they mash this they have a recipe from 1824 called the stiggins fancy it's the stiggins fancy pineapple rum and okay. this is just so so just full of flavor uh, it's so beautiful and i love it with cigars and i think it's going to probably take it in a whole well, maybe not completely different direction, but yeah. it's so. Same. So, so I will. If you notice, my cap has been has been broken. I've already uh, been tasting this one. So I had I, I I had to try this um, because I didn't want to sip it on air and just um, you know strong with the pineapple notes that may have kind of thrown me for a loop. So I, I, I didn't want to have that first uh, sip online and it not be a pleasant experience. But I'm happy to say that I tried it last night. I cheated and uh, oh, that's, I'm glad you did. very subtle and very pleasant, which is which I, I was actually quite surprised. So you, how do you as you um, let's both and cheers. I'm glad you like this. And yeah. I'm glad you went ahead and and tried it. And it's it's again, whether you're having it with a cigar or just a cocktail, put it on the rocks, have it neat. Uh, this stuff is so, so interesting and probably one of the tastiest creations ever. I mean, uh, the team there at Plantation and Pierre Ferron, uh, Maison Ferron, um, Alexandra and the team there, they really did a great job just coming yeah. up with this recipe that they discovered pre-prohibition uh, from Stiggins Fancy, from Reverend Stiggins himself. Uh, but you know what? So, so let's, let's explore that. That's interesting to me. So, so this recipe of the pineapple rum is... Pre prohibition, eighteen twenty four. Okay. Yeah. So, it, 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 so that tells me that that it wasn't a, a necessity to do this, right? They they really wanted to just create this experience of, of they wanted to have to, yeah. as opposed to you know most of the mis mixed drinks that we got for the most part rose during you know came about during prohibition because people had to you know 
mask the taste of uh oh, yeah of, of the of the, the spirits that uh that were being you know the bootleg stuff that was that's out right. there oh well, that's right a lot of those this, cocktails this was, actually, this was actually thought out uh to, to be the experience that it is and not something that came about as a result of prohibition you're cool? right yeah very yeah. very well thought and just so so pure it's the pure pineapple i mean they have a way they go about crushing and extracting just all that essence of the pineapple and uh it truly is one of the best creations ever and with this cigar i mean that tropical note against the creamy note against this the beautiful elegant smoke it's uh this is incredible i really like this is a very nice tropical pairing even puts us further to being closer to miami there you go i like it i like it any questions for Sean? Definitely ask them. Tweet them back. Uh, I see a lot of um, a lot of cigar fans uh, coming in. Uh, Victor, thanks for watching. Kindle. What time is it on Fridays? You do it again. What's the time on Fridays? You do nine p.m. Eastern time. Nine p.m. Eastern. Be, be watching, and you'll learn more about it by following his uh, Instagram account. Uh, this is the newest one, only out for a limited time. So this is something you really have to kind of hunt for, or you can find this one online too, probably, right? You can find. Uh, it I think it's going to have very limited uh, availability online. Okay. Um, okay. But I mean, there there will be some retailers that that, that have it available. Um, it's not like a, um, a hard and fast Essence and Stone thing that it can't be sold online. But um, I'd be surprised if there's a lot of avail availability for it online. Right it's, worth, it's, it's worth trying. Yeah, we we gotta we gotta look for them. Uh, Kendall Salisbury says he already has his box of them, so we already have some people that have been uh, grabbing those. Uh, Siri M, um, as you look forward to uh, what's, I mean, obviously you are very careful about how many you you know you release the, the expressions. Mm -hmm. You do have a new Spectre coming this year. We'll be seeing. Yes, yes, yes. Spectre. Uh, so we didn't do a 2020 release for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, just wasn't an idea to sort of retool the packaging. Um, uh, quite honestly, we got really ambitious uh, with what last year's packaging would have been. And um, we could have executed, but it, it would have been a little bit larger. Uh, the actual packaging would have been larger than we would have liked. And also, um, a lot more expensive than we would have liked, uh, which subsequently passes on to to the uh, consumer and the price of the cigar. And Spectre's are already a pretty pricey cigar. So we want to make sure, and this may be the, um, you know, we, we never know if we're going to do another Spectre. Um, so if this is the last release for a while, access to it is possible for, for, for people. Um, so, you know, we didn't want to price ourselves sort of, you know, um, just out of the stratosphere totally. So it just made sense to to to, to rethink the packaging, um, you know, and, and, and make it something that 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 that's you know more attainable for for more people to be honest. Okay, so again, just to make sure we had that, it's uh, yeah. what we're looking at is something that's going to be new packaging this year. Well, yeah, we've done you know last couple of years. Uh, uh, each year the packaging is different, so it's so it's going to be different from the from the from the previous two iterations. Um, still ten count box. Uh, in the same price point, uh, 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 more or less, and the cigar should be out. We're shooting for, uh, for some time. Yeah, gotcha. So uh, again, it's coming. Uh, did you say July? Is that what you said? I, I don't know what to do about this. This is so frustrating. Oh, don't worry about it, Sean. We 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 have so many friends in the cigar world. They're they're, they're they are. Uh, I think we're keep, we're we're making them even more interested by. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, but no, I, I didn't say right, July. So I is it July? Is that what you said? In the fall. Um, in the fall, oh, it'll be in the fall. Okay, I, in the I, fall. I, I, October, October is what we're shooting for, but it October. could be, it could be October, November, somewhere in there. Okay, October, November. And the actual expression, are you able to tell us about the expression yet, or is it uh, to be announced? Uh, yeah, I'm going to sit on that uh, um, a little bit. Um, excuse me. Um, I'm going to sit on that a little bit. Um, Something you've never done. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, have, some, we'll have some carryover. Um, yeah. You know. um, tricky, because, 
you know, um, uh, Spectre is 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 something that really um, uh, takes in uh, tobaccos that we are either uh, um, you know almost out of or or uh, or maybe we haven't been able to use. Used for some something that makes the tobacco a little bit uh, uh, harder um, um, to use in, in a regular production standpoint. So, and there's only so much of that stuff out there, right? So, uh, right. You know, but we, we we have some some interesting stuff teed up for next year um, that that I certainly want to use as far as the leaf uh, that may turn into Spectre, but it may not. Uh, uh, to be honest, but it's something I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Something that uh, that we. actually for a couple of years and just hasn't fit into um, you know what we had planned but um, I'm 90 percent sure I'm going to use it next year and it may be Spectre or maybe something else but it, it, it's cool it, I'm really trying for us not to always have to come up with something that's a full-time regular production cigar um, there's only so much bandwidth with the retailers uh, as far as how to fit stuff on the shelves that's going to live on the shelves you know um, you know for an infinite amount of time. Uh, versus something that's a special release that you know on we kind of there's a few sort of special things that we we have we have sort of teed up right now. Nice. So all kinds of new things coming next year, uh, the, both in the fall and in the next year from uh, Cohiba. This is the very newest, the Cohiba Serie M. Uh, be watching for this. Uh, make sure you get. Uh, especially if you're a Cohiba fan, whether you're a cigar fan, Cohiba fan, look for that. Again, they're only sold in boxes of 10, you said? Five? What, what, how do we find these? Box of 10. Box of 10. Yeah. yeah. Box of 10. And um, these were about, what, what did you think of the pineapple? What Any other notes that came about as you had the pineapple rum with the uh, Cohiba? You, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're much better at this than me, man. <laughs> well, I like it. I like both of these rums a lot. I think they're perfect with cigars. I don't know. I, I, I get pineapple. Uh, I get a. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if it's citrus or, or maybe it's kind of apricot, but it's yeah. not. I'm not getting. I'm not getting uh, uh, sort of the, the the deeper complexities like the toffee or or. or Even maybe a touch of like you said yeah. apricot, like I would get like kind of a grilled apricot, like grilled fruit almost with the cigar. Maybe, and, maybe, yeah, yeah. A yeah. little into that grilled fruit. Uh, both of these are just perfect with uh, your Cohiba uh, cigar pairings. Uh, it's Sean Williams. Actually, we have one question here uh, from a fan of Cohiba in uh, Tucson. Do you know when you'll be back in Tucson, Arizona, Sean? Any? Uh, when I'll be back? Uh, I don't know. We'll be there. I've never been to Tucson, so they um, want you there. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't. That's a good question. Uh, I was in Phoenix um, last year, maybe early this year. Um, so I know I'm going to get back to Arizona sometime before the year is out. Maybe I talk to uh, my sales rep out there and see if we can make a run out to Tucson. I'm not very familiar with the Tucson area, to be honest. I've, I've never been there, um, yeah. so that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, Kendall, tell us down below if there's a particular cigar lounge or shop that you'd want to uh, see Sean at. We'd, we'd love to hear about that. We appreciate it. Kendall also is asking if, if he orders cigars through the mail. Once they come in the mail, uh, how long should you let them rest before you either put them in the in the humidor or you smoke them? What, what are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. Um, yeah, and I guess that depends on a couple of things. I mean, are we talking... Um, you know, are you on the West Coast and the cigars came from um, Florida or Pennsylvania? Then you're talking um, four days or so in the truck, or um, I guess depending on how you came. I would at least set the cigars away for you know two or three days in my humidor. Um, right, ideally, you want to be sub seventy degrees and and sub seventy percent humidity, somewhere around sixty. Five to sixty-eight uh, on both, um, and I would I would let them sit for a couple of three days uh, if you can, uh, at least that. Yeah, let them sit for uh, yeah. several days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the temp temperature and humidity really, really uh, uh, affects the, the the experience of a cigar. I mean, right. you can't you can't discount that at all. I mean, it's serious. Yeah. 
Absolutely. The good news about uh, rum and whiskey, though, obviously, whole different beast. You can just open it right away. That's yeah, there you go. how about that, right? There That's you go. good news. Just start sipping on the rum, save some for the cigar, and then eventually uh, light up that cigar. Maybe you'll still be sitting in the same place ready to light that, uh, light that smoke up. As yeah. you get back on the road, Sean, is there a favorite place that you, that that uh, whether it's a cigar lounge or or just a view that you're looking forward to just having a nice uh, cohiba at as you uh, as you're traveling again? I, I lost you for a second, man. I'm sorry. Say again. All right. No, it's all right. Uh, as you're as you're back on the road, is there some place where you're just really looking forward to being? Whether it's a cigar lounge or a view that you just really love seeing the, uh, you know, sunset or whatever. Is there some place? Yeah, man. Um... Yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, it, it's it's not um, as friendly a cigar city as it used to be, but uh, New York, man. I mean, it's it's um, uh, you know that that's one of my favorite cities. Having uh, been able to get there, um, man, since uh, I don't think I made it there last year, so probably 2019. Um, so that's the, the only one I, I think that's not uh, you know uh, I made it out to the West Coast. I did the Rob Rob Report Car of the Year. Uh, event in uh, in November actually, um, so I was able to get the West Coast and sort of get that that beautiful weather out there. And um, uh, I'll actually be out there in a couple of weeks. Um, I've certainly been been down to Miami. That's always a, a, a fun place. Uh, I've been to Chicago, one of my favorite cities. I've been able to get there. So uh, of my favorite cities, sort of here in in, in in the mainland USA, New York is is, is the place I probably uh, miss the most because uh, I've, I've been able to to get around to all the other major cities that I usually uh, get to uh, in some fashion. Uh, the big thing I'm missing is getting to the factory, though, and that's, I mean, you know, I've missed at this point three or so at least factory uh, uh, trips, you know, uh, in this past, uh, you know, year or so since uh, since we've been shut down. So I'm really looking forward to getting back down to, uh, to, to, to the factory. Um, so, yeah, that's yeah. what I miss more than anything. Because you get to do a lot of work right there, hands on, seeing what they're doing, and yeah. you really you oversee. You know, you're on the taste. Was it called the tasting panel there at General? You oversee a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of cigars as far as how they're blended, right? Yeah, not just Cohiba. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the tasting yeah. panel for for you know uh, pretty much all the stuff that we put out. Myself along with a few other people, obviously. But, right. Uh, you know, and we can't. You know, if uh, uh, how do you say if uh, if Muhammad can't come to the mountain, then the mountain comes to Muhammad. Uh, so we're actually having. Uh, Big contingent from the factory come up with a bunch of different things that we're working on. And we're going to have a, a summit of sorts in uh, Miami in a couple of weeks, where uh, we're going to basically take over property there and uh, and smoke through a lot of cigars and um, and bounce a lot of ideas uh, uh, back and forth. And um, and that'll be fun because uh, wow. at least it'll give me a chance to to to, to get uh, um, you know with the team there. There's a lot of people. You know, I, I sort of, you know, kind of uh, joke that, you know, I'm kind of maybe like the race car driver in the car. Yeah. But there, there, there's a lot of people, you know, who put the car together and the crew and stuff that you don't see. I mean, uh, you know, Yuri Gian, incredible cigar guy, uh, um, you know, blender in the DR. Uh, Jonas Diaz, he's like, uh, you know, the, the head of all of our, our, our production. Uh, uh, Augustine Garcia in, in, the, in the DR, a bell crew. So I miss those guys. I haven't had a chance to see him in, in, in and those are guys I sit around with, and you know, uh, Rick Rodriguez, of course, um, of CAO, um, which you know he's one of our best friends. So um, he and I talk a lot, but we haven't seen each other, man. So it's going to be good to kind of wow. sit down with those guys and, and and just really, really just muscle through uh, some tobacco stuff, you know. Um, and, and I always learn when I'm with them, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. So really, it's, you're going to get together. You're going to smoke through it. What is it? What does that look like when you do that? Like, just like we get through and we taste it, through a lot of stuff. It looks like it looks like a very messy table. Is what it looks like. <laughs> That'll be nice. No, so it's um, it's it's a lot of moving parts to it, honestly. Uh, and I don't know how the guys pull it off. Um, we we've only had to do this one time before, and that was big, that was just based on time constraints, and and us needing to get together collectively, and bringing people from different because uh, we have operations in, in Nicaragua. The DR and Honduras, and, and 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 we've only done this once before, and now we're doing it just based on where things stand with travel. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of email back and forth, which is not optimal. Um, and they'll they'll send blends up, but it's a different experience um, when you get a cigar that's been sent up from the factory. Um, you know that that comes to you, uh, not totally aged. It's in cellophane, so it's a little bit moist. Uh, so there's a lot of things to it. So. Uh, the things that we've been working on sort of via mail, which, again, is not optimal, 
um, we're, we're having road and age and they're in better condition. We're going to get together and collectively just sit around um, and just and just you know uh, you know smoke some of the stuff we're working on. Uh, we smoke each other's stuff, which is always cool. Uh, you know, Laura with Macanudo, uh, oh, yeah. CAO. So we smoke each other's stuff, and it's like uh, you know, and 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 hopefully you don't you know get the situation where you're too jealous of, of of a blend that somebody else is working on, right? So, uh, <laughs> but you know that that that's the fun part, you know. And we get we give each other feedback, and and you know from everything from. Uh, profiles with the blend, uh, even packaging. Um, you know, we, we we collaborate a lot, and 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 and, um, and we're able to. You know, it's one thing uh, if, if if a consumer is kind of giving you feedback, and it's not the, not to discount a consumer giving you feedback, but it comes from a different place as to someone who is a cigar maker, a cigar blender, uh, someone who's in the sort of same place as you, and and, and have to you know, sort of look at the passion side of it, but also the practicality uh, uh, aspect of it, whether or not it's going to be marketable in the way that it's being presented, packaging and so forth. So we have some really, uh, you know, um, candid conversations, uh, sometimes a couple conversations, to be honest. And, uh, you know, but it's all, but it's always fun and I always learn. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice, nice. So that'll be a good gathering of some of the best minds, uh, makers, Mm-hmm. Palettes in in cigars. Are you going to be doing any events while you're there, or just is this no, more? no, no, no? It's just doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll be working four days in Miami, then I fly straight from there up to uh, to to Rhode Island um, you know, for uh, uh, a special event up there. So uh, yeah, so that's going to be a long week for me, but looking forward to it. Nice, nice, good. Well, Sean will be so many great places, and again, the best place to uh, to find out where Sean will be. Uh, Follow him on Instagram uh, at Sean Williams underscore Cohiba. And uh, again, it's Bourbon Blog Live. This video will be up permanently. Uh, if you start somehow joined us late in the game on the video, it'll be up permanently wherever you're watching. And we will also put the audio up on uh, our podcast channel, which is anchor.fm forward slash Bourbon Blog. And again, the very limited edition, only you said 5,000. Uh, of the 5,000 boxes, 5,000 boxes, 50, cigars, 50,000 cigars, 5,000 boxes. 50, of 10, so. That's very limited for cigars. Yeah. I mean, Spectre obviously is, is, is a lot less than that, but Spectre is very different. But yeah, as far as um, what Cohiba does, is this is uh, this is, is, is very, very limited. Uh, but good thing is, I mean, 5,000 boxes is enough for at least our, our key retailers to really uh, at least get a few. Um, and, uh, and it's been working out so far. We, we, we still, you know, we still have, I think, 1,600 or so um, boxes still um, that, that have to be shipped out because the factory is so small. They, they have to pack, the, just packing the boxes is, 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 is a pretty uh, intense thing to do, uh, right. just staging it from a size standpoint. So, uh, but the um, good thing is uh, all of them haven't hit the market yet. So there's still a few more that's kind of trickling out there. So I'm happy about that. Oh, that's that's so good. Well, Sean, it's it's so great to have you here. We've enjoyed having you uh, a number of times mm-hmm. on um, on our Bourbon Blog Lives, and we'll continue to have you back trying some new stuff. And hopefully, at one of these events, or we'll do an event with you here this year. It'll be great to uh, see you in person. I I can't wait to have a, a sip and a smoke with you in in person at some point. Very soon. Can you go to Whiskey X? Uh, I haven't been recently. That's the one in. Remind me. Um, uh, that, that, well, I think there's a few, but there's there's one in Vegas. I think Vegas. that I'm actually going to be at this year. Uh, All right, in, uh, in October. So that would be a chance for us. I love that. We sh- we gotta yeah. we gotta do something. I'd love to do. You're such a such a talented guy. It's always fun hanging out with you. We gotta do something. Whether it's whiskey. No, or- Thanks for having me, man. I, oh I, no, always, it's always fun. Always fun. It's, it's my pleasure. And again, the rums we tried. You can find out more about those on plantationrum.com. The pineapple. And the XO, these are just so good with the Cohiba cigars. These are so lovely. And uh, thank you, Guillaume, for uh, all your help in getting us those. And also, Brendan here locally. We really appreciate Plantation and Cohiba. And uh, hopefully, we see you real soon. This cigar is so nice. I really thank love you. this. Thank you. Yes, thank the approachability, you. the creaminess, uh, just so many interesting notes. It is such an interesting cigar. I love this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad. Uh, glad, glad. I was able to get it to you. I know we were up against the time crunch. So I'm glad they got to you on time. Yeah. Thank you so much. And continue to keep us posted. And everybody uh, watching, thanks for watching Bourbon Blog Live. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And uh, we'll see you all again soon. Thank you, everybody. Cheers, Sean. Thank you, brother. Appreciate